Hello and welcome to Woodsman Comforts, sharing know-how that boosts your confidence and comfort in the woods. Hardly anything boosts your confidence and comfort like being able to make a fire when you need one, and there are lots of ways to do it. There's fire steel matches, lighters, batteries. No matter which method you prefer, it's always very useful and very satisfying to be able to make a fire from friction using just the wood you find in the woods. To make a fire from friction, you first create dust which congeals into an ember which you then transfer to a tinder bundle and blow into a flame. What? Fire from dust? Is that possible? In the last 40 years there have been 252 deaths from dust explosions, thousands of injuries. Consider that the sun itself, hot enough to make life possible on Earth in winters bearable in Michigan was formed from dust, compressed with gases to create the intense heat that it provides to us. So yes, it is possible. And in this video, we're going to look at the basic physics and the materials you need to make that happen. The second video, we'll take a look at the tinder bundle phase. And in the third video, we'll focus on the technique of using the bow drill. So come on, let's get started. You make a friction fire by rotating the spindle in a hearthboard hole so that it creates dust that heats up to about 800 degrees. And then you let that pile of dust congeal into an ember. To do that, you need four pieces of equipment. You need a spindle, you need a hearthboard, you need a bow, and you need a bearing block. The spindle and hearthboard can be made of the same wood or of different wood. To be good wood, however, it has to meet two criterion. The first one is that it be a fine-grained, soft, hardwood. The reason for that is that fine-grained, soft hardwoods create a very fine dust and have a lower ignition point than harder woods like an oak or resinous woods like pine. Commonly used woods include cottonwood, willow, cedar, basswood, tilia or linden it's called also. Uh, I've also used seep willow, uh, a piece of old dead rose bush stem, and I think this is box elder. So there are many kinds of woods that'll work, and part of the fun is experimenting with what you find in the woods. The second criterion is that the wood be dry and solid, not green and growing, but not decaying and punky. The third component is a bearing block. It's how you hold the spindle in the hearthboard. It can be made of any hard material, any material that's harder than the spindle. I've used hardwood, I've used bone, I've used stone. My current favorite is a measuring spoon embedded in a piece of wood because it's very low friction. The final of the four pieces is the bow. It can be curved or straight, flexible or stiff. I prefer curved and stiff because I control the tension on the string with my right hand like this instead of relying on the tension of the wood to provide adequate tension on the spindle. It should be about arm's length at least from your armpit to your knuckle so that you can give long smooth strokes. The cord can be anything synthetic or natural. This happens to be paracord or 550 cord. The key to success in a friction fire is obviously managing the friction. So here are guidelines for the four friction points you have to manage when you're making a bow drill fire. The first is the friction where your spindle fits in your bearing block. You want to minimize that and you minimize that by having your bearing block being the smoothest, hardest material that you can find. 
The second point of friction is between the cord on your bow and the spindle. You want just enough friction on here to keep it turning quickly. You manage that friction between the cord and the spindle by either having a flexible piece of wood or my preferred way is bending the line as I go to maintain the friction that I want on the spindle. The third point of friction is between the bottom of the spindle and the hole in the hearthboard. And that's where you have to get just the right amount of friction by managing your pressure and the speed by which the speed of rotation. The final point of friction is between your hearthboard and the forest floor or whatever it's sitting on. You want to stand on that so you have maximum friction because if your board moves while you're making dust, it knocks your dust around, which means it won't heat up and it won't, you won't have a pile to form into an M. Finally, I want to talk briefly about the dust you create. You're looking for two characteristics. The first is that it's close to the color of chocolate. If it's tan instead of dark like this, it means you were either not rotating your spindle fast enough or the pressure was too light. Uh, it's not going to ignite. The second characteristic is that it's, it, the dust has to be very, very fine, like a baby powder. The grainier the dust, the less likely it is to ignite. So there are the basics you need to know to make a friction fire. In the next video, I'm going to tell you to forget the old expression, where there's smoke, there's fire, because getting smoke is easy, but getting the fire from it is not automatic. The key to getting the fire is getting the tinder bundle right. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next video. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on down the trail.